My name is General Davis, and uh, I've organized a press conference here at the Southwest Community Center about uh, bail reform, uh, blacks, Latinos, and minorities that are getting high bails in Syracuse, and um, no one to say anything or do anything about it. I want to introduce, introduce people who's here right now. Uh, at the table, we have Sonia Cannon, family member who has a high bail issue. We have LaDonia Smith, have a son who has a high bail issue. And we have Doris Cox, who also have an issue with high bail. And myself again, General Davis. We also have Holly Hawkins, who's speaking about, uh, who come as a, uh, as a concerned citizen about the high bail uh, format. And we also have Ali Muhammad, who has an issue with the high bail. So if you want, I'm gonna start off by reading a statement that I have here for myself, and then we'll have everyone that's present to make a, a, a comment or a statement on the high bill situation here in Syracuse, New York. Thank you for coming. My name is General Davis. I have lived all my life in Syracuse, New York, besides living in and out of jail from time to time. I made, I made mistakes in my life growing up on the south side of Syracuse from a neighborhood called Brick City. It's a place where many, like me, ended up on the wrong side of the justice system. I don't blame anyone but myself for the path I took, and I cannot go back and rewrite history. But I have spent most of, this, most of those last 50 years trying to do right by people and to help young people who might walk in my troubled, in my troubled foot, footsteps to find a more hopeful path even wrote two books to validate my commitment for change. Free from Death Road and Dead Boys Walking. This includes members of my family whom I believe have been unfairly treated because they share my name. The Eighth Amendment to the United States Constitution states, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishment inflicted. This was written to keep the government, courts, and DA officers from imposing excessive penalties on poor people. It is supposed to guarantee all Americans the right to excessive accessible bail, which makes a huge difference for anyone who faces charges and intends to prove their innocence. The Eighth Amendment is not being held up in Syracuse. My son Khalid faces homicide charges stemming from a shooting last May. I am not here to argue his, his guilt or innocence or to dispute the horror of this tragedy, but, to, but, to, but, to, but he faces a bail of nine, excuse me, but he faces a bail of $1 million cash, $2 million bond, or $10 million partially secured bond with 10% down and $1 million down at time of release. My daughter, Janelle Davis, faces similar charges, though she's accused of seemingly lesser crime of driving a car used in the event. Her bail is $1 million cash, $2 million bond, or $4 million partially secure bond. With $400,000 at the time of release, let those numbers sink in. $1 million cash, two million bond or four million partially secured. These numbers are impossible for any family's ability to meet. If you look at, if you look at a defendant in similar crimes, especially those from wealthier suburban settings, I believe you will find a different and far more sympathetic bail structure to those who are charged. I believe the current bail policies of Allegheny County are abusive, unfair, and violates the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution. Justice is not being served in the city of Syracuse for blacks, Latinos, and minorities. Thank you. Now what we're gonna do with that statement, we'll go around the table and we have other people to speak about this bail uh, situation in Syracuse and they'll tell you how they feel and their personal feedback. I'd like to introduce uh, a family a family member from the community who also have uh, a situation with bail issues, 
and her name is Sonya Cannon. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my son is incarcerated currently right now, and he has a million dollar bail, um, 300,000 secure. Uh, and I too agree with General Davis in the unfair treatment against our color people, people, Latino, and stuff of that matter. So I um, would like some help in that situation. I let uh, the next speaker, uh, the next uh, community uh, family member of concern would be LaDanya Smith. Hi, my name is LaDanya. My son is being held at the Justice Center on some, that's irrelevant, some charges and um, the bell is just ridiculous. There's no way that anyone could come up with the money. His bell is, uh, I believe, a million dollars. Um, I think it was 20, I'm not for sure with the bonds and all that other stuff. I think it's just too high for a person not to have anything to try to come up with that much money in a short amount of time. Um, I Basically, it's just... Uh, uh, community of uh, family member uh, will be Doris Cox. I wish I could have said I am Doris Cox, the mother of Tyshawn Martinez. And I'm here participating in the group because my son is currently incarcerated in the Onondaga County Justice Center. And he has three bills. One is $400,000. The second one is $200,000. And the third one is $100, which is really too high for one person to try to bail their child out, especially on a fixed income or working, it's just too high. It's unreasonable, the bail amount. The next speaker, community activist, and uh, gonna speak about the bail situation among other things that's going on in the court system. His name is Ali Muhammad. Well, primarily, I just want to say that when we say the criminal justice system, using the term justice is a misnomer because there is no justice. And we know that African-Americans, Hispanics, and minorities are being held under unjust bail conditions. Also, we're disproportionately being held by those conditions. And the thing that we have to understand, this is a, this is a system is baked into the Syracuse community. This has been going on for over 30 years, pretty much close to 40 years. This is the same system has been in existence. And it's again, disproportionately affecting African-Americans, Hispanics, people of color and minorities. And the thing that we need most is community support. You know, we bring these issues up in the community, but we get no response. The apathy is horrendous. You know, people don't even care. You know, like, it's not happening to me, you know, but your turn will come, mm -hmm. you know. And so we have to understand that it's important that we uh, get together on these issues so that we can bring about changes. I have a son who was convicted. He had a, a Mr. He had a circumstantial case. His lawyer didn't call one witness. His lawyer didn't even use an investigator. How do you not call a witness in a trial? How do you not win a circumstantial case? A circumstantial case says that all reasonable doubt has to be removed, all reasonable doubt, in order to for them to, to sustain a conviction. And his nothing, nothing ties him to the crime. No forensic evidence, nothing. And he was still convicted. You know. And the thing is, is that again, you know, I commend you, mothers, for being here, uh, speaking on behalf of your, your your children. You know. And as a father, I feel. It's the same way, you we know. Commend you. But we're what we're, we're powerless if we don't get together. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So lastly we have 
uh, Mr. Holly Hawkins, 2020 presidential candidate, and also community activist who also come to give his uh, uh, insight on the bail reform and other things that's uh, not right in the, in, in, in the community. Okay, Howard. Well, we just heard a lot of testimony to the fact that we don't have equal justice under law, particularly with respect to the Eighth Amendment against excessive bail. We got a law passed in 2019 in this state that removes bail for some crimes, but the crimes where you can use bail, the purpose of the bail is to get the accused back into court. It's not to keep them in jail. If there's somebody who is the judge believes is a threat to public safety if they're released, even though they're still innocent until proven guilty, they can keep them in jail. What we got in these cases is the judge using bail to keep them in jail, which is hypocritical and in violation of the spirit of the law that passed in 2019. And that law passed because of cases like this, there's a lot of complaints. And there's one in particular y'all may have heard of, Khalif Browder. He's about 14, 13 years old, accused of stealing a backpack. He said, I'm innocent. They put him in Rikers Island for three years, two of them in solitary confinement. He got beat by the guards. He got beat by gangs in there. He came out a damaged kid because the DA after three years said, I don't have any evidence, you can go. He went to jail for three years for nothing. And because he was so damaged, he eventually committed suicide in, you know, in a couple of years. His brother, Akeem, ran for mayor of New York City on bail reform as the Green Party candidate in 2017. And because of that and the actions of a lot of people, we got this bail reform law passed. But as we can see here, it's not being implemented. So what can we do? One thing I would suggest is a lot of these public defenders, they feel like their career depends on getting along to go along with the DA. Nobody wants to take on the DA, very few. There's a, one or two lawyers in this town that's willing to do that. What we need is an elected public defender's office where all their lawyers are paid the same as the prosecutors. They're independent and they're getting paid to really defend people. And then we might get more balance and some of these uh, defenders would stand up and say, you can't impose bail that the family can't afford because that's not the purpose of bail. But, you know, I've been hearing the stories I just heard ever since I got to Syracuse 30 years ago now. And when I got here, I was hearing stories for the last 30 years. And that's why so many people were out in the street, you know, about ending police brutality, but that was also about the brutality of the criminal justice system. So we got a problem and we got to work on it. So, um, Thank you all very much for uh, watching this, uh, this video of uh, a community that's coming together to make a change with the bail system with the misrepresenting, misrepresentation of attorneys in Syracuse who's selling our kids down the, down, 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 down the river. And also, we are we looking forward to anyone who want to be involved or be a part of this uh, campaign or mission or whatever you want to call it, to change the bail system. Because it's only a matter of time if you're from the community and have kids that's in the streets that to whatever they may be doing or not doing, and they go to jail, they'll get the same kind of bail that our kids got. So either we act now or we lay down. That's right. Thank you very much. Looking forward to talking to y'all.